Before I get started, I have to tell you, I can't talk that fast. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was one of the requirements. Is that one of the requirements? Go ahead and start? Okay. It's better to know how to learn than to just know. Anybody know who said that originally? Maybe it would have rhymed, okay? <laughs> We're going to look at innovative ways to teach reflections, dilations, translations, and rotations. Um, some tools that we've already done are paper folding, mirrors, compass and straight edge, grids, patty paper, and dynamic geometry software. <laughs> when used correctly, these have been good, hands-on, tactile ways to have students learn. They have served us well. However, there is a lot of time spent preparing lessons, even with dynamic geometry software. So what if you could create your lesson so that prep time is minimal and the students spend almost all their time playing, investigating, exploring, and discovering the math concepts? Now this is a certainty. Appropriate technology use creates a better, richer learning environment. It also allows the students to do or investigate mathematics that he or she is unable to do otherwise more efficient, understand quicker, more deeply. So let's investigate the relationship between the ratio of areas of dilated triangles. Students are able to explore many pairs of triangles quickly, make a conjecture, and then verbalize them. Then easily test the hypothesis using the filled-in tools that we have supplied, and conclude that the ratio of the areas is the square of the scale factor. This is exactly how I want my students to learn. I would want them to draw conclusions, quickly see several possibilities, generalize if possible, and prove. Imagine doing these types of activities by hand. I took this photo at the Taft School in Connecticut when I taught a summer workshop, never thinking I would use it today. We have created several templates so that students can quickly set up the activity and then spend their valuable time exploring. Here we are investigating the relationship among coordinates when reflecting a triangle about different lines. Here we can look for patterns, change the triangles, and notice we can reflect about really any linear equation. Next, investigate reflecting about the y-axis, look for patterns, again change the triangles. My favorite line to explore is the line y equals the opposite of x because it is not normally done and it has very interesting results and now we can do it with technology. The goal is for students to generalize their findings and be able to verbally explain the results and symbolically represent them as shown here. That's our goal. How many of you have taught rotations? It's a tough one for students. Here I'm rotating triangle ABC about point P through an angle of 135 degrees. And when I ask my students, how would you do this by hand? They all say they have no idea. It's magic. So we put in some tools to help students visualize better. See the eyebrow button at the bottom? Tap it three times and observe. First you see the arcs, then the concentric circles, and then the arcs traveling along those concentric circles. And after seeing this, students tell me, give me a compass and a protractor, I can do this. And this is exactly what we want to happen. Students create their own learning and their understanding, not just tell them what needs to be done. Most teachers, unfortunately, teach rotations of 90 degrees only. That's the only angle. With a grid and just tell the students what to do to the coordinates. Now the students are able to, dis to discover what those patterns are as shown here. Using this technology, students and teachers spend most of the time exploring and learning. They find out how to do these on their own without being told. And they're encouraged to discover the definitions and properties. They're expected to look for patterns, make conjectures, test them, and consider counterexamples. Now compass and straight edge constructions will make more sense. Students will see, better see how to apply these things to solve problems. And my final quote, 
Mathematics is the garment that we continuously alter with our students, and technology should be seamlessly interwoven throughout its fabric. Oh, that was me. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Let me have a good time. <laughs>